Hey folks, I am reviewing the movie Dunkirk. I just finished it. Absolutely phenomenal movie. I'm sitting in the movie theater parking lot right now while it's raw and fresh in my head. Wanted to share my initial thoughts and uh, even before you hear them, go see the movie. It's really fantastic. When I do action movie reviews, I approach it from the background as a war veteran, army ranger, and uh, all-around gun guy. Guns are literally my profession. So uh, anyway, I'm not going to get real in the weeds. I'm not going to say, hey, this wasn't right or anything. Uh, I'm not doing that. I'm really enjoying the movie uh, as a historical fiction, and that's what it was. A real good history and facts from what I know in my limited knowledge. Anyway, it was about 400,000 Allied forces that were stuck behind enemy lines or not enemy lines, they were basically overrun by the Germans in Dunkirk, France. So really the entire movie starts off at the beginning of this military disaster and Allied forces defeat of their trying to evacuate off this beach across the English Channel or wherever into safety. But they just can't catch a break. Uh, German planes, uh, navy, and land forces are closing in at every single moment. And from the moment the movie begins, you're immediately inserted into the action where at any moment the Germans may start stacking bodies. What I really appreciated from the very get-go is the blending of Christopher Nolan, who is the director, is doing a fantastic job using the music, uh, some sound effects, uh, the camera angles, uh, fear on faces, great acting, not doing a lot of storytelling, very, very little talking in this movie at all. Uh, but what I noticed right from the beginning, he was, he was, I, I feel like he was trying to... Uh, deliver it in such a way that the audience would feel the fear themselves. And I thought uh, even using the music and the tempo to simulate like in the first few moments as he's running, uh, the music almost matches like an out of control heartbeat. Uh, like you've got adrenaline pumping through, like, you, like you're running for your life. Uh, and it's getting more and more intense. And so I kind of, I had that initial surge of adrenaline. I wanted to pull out guns and fight. So uh, I thought that that was a really, really good job in the cinematography. It really drew me into the action. Even aerial fights, which, you know, I, my, my, I didn't fight in the air. But still, I just felt like this is good stuff. It must be like this to dog fight with guns back then. I have no idea. But anyway, I thought that was fan fantastic job. Other elements that I really liked about the movie is that it just kind of unapologetically and in a very raw fashion gave the uh, highlights and the upsets indicative of just hellish war in general. Uh, you'll see the best in people where unlikely heroes... Uh, folks that you wouldn't think would perform all of a sudden against insuperable odds rise to the occasion and do really heroic things. Uh, conversely, you'll also see guys shell-shocked, horrified. Uh, they've uh, really lost their mental resolve. They're panicked, fear-stricken, turning on each other. And so you kind of get the full range of human experience. Uh, it, so it's very, very raw. The very first scene is a kid keeps getting shot at the entire uh, you know, beginning of the movie, and he's just trying to go to the bathroom somewhere. Every time he tries to go to the bathroom, something upsetting happens. And so I really just kind of liked how uh, unapologetically human and raw uh, the movie really was. I didn't really fall in love with any of the characters. In fact, I don't really know anyone's name. Uh, as you're starting to get the hang of somebody, because of just how the action keeps uh, diverting from one scene to the next, and all of a sudden you think you're about to get bombed by a plane, you don't really get attached to any characters, but I, I, I don't think that that's even a hit on the movie, because I think the point of the movie wasn't to really follow a few stories closely and build good character development. It wasn't as much about persons as it was about the event itself, and in which case, if that was its point, then it hit the mark perfectly, 10 out of 10, way to go. A few characters really did stand out to me, though. Really, really loved him. One, Tom Hardy, and I'm just a Tom Hardy fan, was a fighter pilot, and he's getting in dog fights, and he was really a great hero. He's running low on fuel all throughout the movie, and, uh, you know, there's the path of turn back and get fuel, and there's the path of keep going on while you're on fumes, and, and uh, 
do everything you can uh, to preserve the lives of those stuck on the beaches of Dunkirk. And so I'm not trying to give any spoilers, but he does really well. And uh, yeah, you, you want to salute him at the end. So uh, anyway, there was that. Then there was also, and this guy probably impressed me the most, there was an old man taking his private vessel toward where the fight is. He's going into war and he doesn't have, you know, this is kind of like his own little schooner. Uh, and he's taking it toward the action of Dunkirk, where all the enemy planes and the naval warships are going. And really, the evacuation of Dunkirk was done partially by mili you know, naval vessels, but a lot of civilian ships that are shuttling all these stranded soldiers from countries that may not even be their own. It's really rescuing allied forces. And so you see this widespread support where it's kind of all hands on deck, where there's this blend of multinationalism that doesn't really matter. It's just doing the right thing and being courageous. And so whereas the military, where the story of Dunkirk is really a military disaster, it's a civilian victory. The civilian was the, the hero as they're rising up and like the troops need help, then let's help them. And they, they really are risking all uh, to go toward where the action is and shuttle them off. And 400,000 uh, military folks that are uh, basically pinned down in Dunkirk, they're going to get evacuated. The German ring perimeter is shrinking on them from moment to moment to moment. So I really, really love that. There was also uh, one story. This is the only partial spoiler I'll give, and it's really not bad. So, so uh, anyway, there was this, uh, but it hung with me. It's so, so cool. Uh, there was a uh, soldier who kind of flipped out. There was an accident that happened, and a boy ended up getting really, really hurt, and yeah, it was really, really bad. There was another boy, and when the soldier, who had clearly in the wrong here, uh, confronted him like, is the boy going to be okay? And clearly this boy was not going to be okay, and the kid lied to him. Even though, it, you know, you could feel this kid's rage, you almost wanted to be like, tell this dude off, tell this guy uh, exactly the harm he caused. He lied to him. Uh, and it was really because I think he pitied that soldier and recognized if this soldier knows what he did wrong, he'll never recover from it. And I just saw such grace modeled there. And so you see warrior poets all throughout the movie kind of rising up. And uh, I just really loved the movie. I rank it real high. Wasn't extremely f family friendly just because of the emotional elements of war and going on. But really it's not terribly bad either. There's not horrible language and you don't see uh, faces exploding as rounds are impacting through them or anything. You don't see bloody limbs flying everywhere. Everywhere. So uh, really, it, it, it's not nearly as bad as a lot of the carnage of other war movies. It, it, it's decent for uh, family friendly. All right, so that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Share, like, subscribe, all that stuff. And check out below in the video description. I got all kinds of links that some of you guys may be interested. Train hard, train smart, and watch, uh, watch good movies. See you guys.